Will the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the California State University please come to order? Uh, Ms. Hernandez, would you please call the roll? Trustee Actenberg. Trustee Alexanian. Trustee Brewer. Present. Governor Brown. Speaker Atkins. Present. Trustee Day. Trustee Eisen. Trustee Farrar. Trustee Fagan. Trustee Fortune. Trustee Garcia. Trustee Glazier. Trustee Kimbell, Trustee Monville, Trustee Morales, Lieutenant Governor Newsom, Trustee Norton, Here. Trustee Stepanek, Here. Superintendent Torlakson, and Chancellor White. Present. Chair Monville, we have a quorum. Thank you, and I did want to note that uh, Trustee Actenberg was was with us. So, um, at this time, uh, this is in the time in which uh, board, the board will hear from public speakers. We will. Uh, proceed with our maximum 30-minute uh, period for public comments. Um, uh, we would uh, ask that uh, the speakers uh, be respectful and mindful of other speakers to come behind them and, and be uh, sensitive uh, to that uh, to that time. Uh, when a speaker times in, I ask that you yield the microphone to the next speaker so they may address the board. Um, Mr. Hernandez, if you'd call the first three speakers. Jennifer Ovalle, Alicia Morales, Lizzie Name. Hi, my name is Jennifer Ovalle. I'm from Cal State Dominguez Hills, and I'm speaking on behalf of Students for Quality Education. Students for Quality Education has been a part of the change in the CSU system since 2007. As a statewide student group, we join forces with faculty, staff, and other student groups to demand our voices were heard. In 2012, when punishment fees were proposed, we organized. As a result, these policies did not move forward. When Chancellor Reed ran the CSU as a corporation, students went on a hunger strike asking for his resignation. Recently, we pressured Governor Jerry Brown to put a moratorium on the cuts to ethnic studies programs, and Chancellor White listened. When we realized that Chancellor White and campus presidents found a loophole around Governor Brown's four-year tuition moratorium with their proposed student success fee, we spoke out, along with faculty and community college students. Unfortunately, unfortunately we remained silent and ignored. Recently, we surveyed over 4,200 CSU students statewide around the idea of the student success fee. 90% of students who took the survey indicated that they oppose the fee. 72% stated that they were already paying too much, and 51% stated that they are currently having difficulty paying for their basic necessities, such as food, housing, books, etc. We have also collected many signatures on a petition that demands a different process to the allocation of funds to address student needs. Campus presidents and top executives receive raises last month while student debt reaches an average of $30,000. Our generation is told to pay our way through while past generations did not. Both the governor and the chancellor benefited from an affordable CSU education. Why would you deny thousands of students the same opportunity? The failure of the CSU to provide accessibility is a direct attack on working class peoples, people of color, and other marginalized people. I'm sure this was not former Governor Pat Brown's vision when he pioneered the master plan. We, the students of the CSU, are tired of hearing that our institutions are the best they can be. When fees are increasing, classes are cut or transferred to extended ed, faculty are laid off, and services and programs are defunded. And as a result, students drop out. Education is a human right and should be free. The CSU needs to realign its priorities, actively demand more funding from the state, and roll back fees for true student success. Thank you. So roll back the fees. You promised us a freeze. So roll back the fees. Good afternoon, uh, Chancellor White and Board of Trustees. My name is Alicia Morales. I'm with the Long Beach Immigrant Rights Coalition. Uh, we're a grassroots organization here in the city, the city of Long Beach that works with the immigrant community. Um, but I am most importantly here uh, representing undocumented students, incoming undocumented students into the system of higher education low-income families um, and mixed-status families. Uh, and I'm here to address the impact of the student success fee and, and how it can be potentially hurtful to the community and the families that we work with. As an organization, we constantly work with immigrant families and provide resources, support, and information to them. Uh, one of our biggest projects is supporting undocumented students in their pursuits of higher education. But just um, and just last week, we sat with students at Jordan High School here in North Long Beach 
uh, telling them about AB 540, California Dream Act, and different modes of access into the system of higher education. And while there was tremendous relief in their faces, we know that this is not enough support. Not all students are gonna be able to qualify for this type of aid. Not all students have support from their parents. Many act as financial resources towards their families. And so in the midst of, of all this, these students are forced to navigate the, student, to navigate the school and financially provide for their tuition. The CSU system was created for its affordability to the communities, but these constant increases in fees put a strain not only in the lives of our students, but our communities and their families and our greater well-being. With 12 out of 23 CSUs adopting student success fees ranging from $35 to $718, this may not sound like a lot, but we have students who after paying tuition and bills don't even have money to get to school. They can't physically get to school. Is this the example we want to send to our students that the CSUs limit access to hardworking people? These are students and, and they're hurting and there's something we need to do about it. It is your responsibility to address these needs and meet them. You are appointed to ensure that all students have the same opportunities and a great part of that responsibility is to find alternative ways of funding and not placing these burdens on students, defunding classrooms and programs that keep them there. Keeping students attending at our as a community, we're here to demand that you address not only the need for alternative funding, but how these fees affect our immigrant communities and the greater community at large. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Lizzie Name. Um, I wanna thank SPA for inviting me to speak here today. Um, I'm a UCLA graduate. I had the privilege of serving on the student government at UCLA last year. And since then, I've been an active part of LANE, Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy, as well as a community organizer for 9 to 5, uh, National Association of Working Women. I actually am really proud of the fact that we've opened a chapter here in Long Beach. So. Um, Another fun fact, I'm making my first loan payment next week. So that's an exciting milestone that I'll be celebrating with my family. Um, it goes without saying that the privatization of higher education um, and the public university, while often politically expedient for decision makers, is, does an injury to our students, our faculty, and the mission upon which the university was founded. So while I applaud, I applaud you for your vote earlier today, um, I wanna remind you that this is not enough. I'm among several students here addressing you on the issue of student success fees and the rising cost of the CSU, but I want to also make sure that you remain cognizant of the many students that are not here and that are not represented in this room today. Um, many of the students who are lost before college because of the prohibitive expense and the paywall that has been erected to higher education. Um, this is not just a student issue. It is an issue for working families, for low-income families, for communities of color. So please, I hope that my voice is not, I'm not speaking for myself, but also for the many, many invisible people that are not here today. Um, again, um, it should not take protests, rallies, and legislative directives to make the right decision. Um, to serve the interests of the community and of your students. Um, but I do challenge you to be creative, empathetic, and imaginative in your future decisions when it comes to financing higher education, not to turn to students as your first financiers. Thank you. Ernesto Chavez, Daisy Gallardo, Andrea Donati. Uh, and hello and uh, good afternoon. Um, it's actually my first time in one of these meetings, so it's uh, finding it pretty interesting. But uh, my name is Ernesto, I'm a student at Cal Poly Pomona. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, what I see at my school. I know our ex doctor, President Ortiz, he had a vision for Cal Poly Pomona of turning it into a world class university. Um, but to me, what that really means is that he's trying to create, or that what's happening is that they're trying to create a more elite university. University, we have, you know, more, more. Um, for example, right now we are a commuter school and trying to turn it into a uh, non-commuter school. I know they have plans for a new freshman village. We just finished or opened up to, uh, this year our new brick, Bronco Recreation 
an intramural complex, which is a three-story gym that, you know, not many people on campus, well, not everybody on campus uses, and it is another $400 more on our tuition. Um, besides that, you know, we have extra fees that keep on coming in, the success fee, which is supposed to be for like things like Wi-Fi and things like that, which uh, is pretty much the same thing. Honestly, you can't really tell the difference in the speed. Um, so that's really my concern, you know, the rising cost of education. I'm a fourth year this year at Cal Poly Buena, and um, I was paying $6,000 in tuition my first year, and now it's about to be 7000 So, um, you know, it's it's kind of unfair to the people who, you know, we come from working class families, and we can't really afford even that. And my parents, you know, they're struggling right now. Uh, you know, they were, both of them work, and it's not always easy to pay, um, even with financial aid. So. I just want to bring that to the attention of the board. Hopefully, y'all are always keeping that in mind that, you know, our focus shouldn't be, be uh, turning our schools into elite universities. Our focus should be serving the communities that surround our schools, which is what they were originally meant for. Thank you. Hello, I'm Daisy. I'm from Cal State Long Beach. And first of all, I would like to thank you guys for giving us your time. And um, to go back to the chancellor's account on the state of US CSU, um, he gave a very good account of how its life in CSU system is, but in that account, he contradicted himself twice. In those two instances, the first one, he talked about community. That term was used heavily in his broadcast, yet when it's applied to the CSU system, the term community becomes defined as one member of that community imposing a student success fee on other members without having to honor the prior agreement we had in 2012 in the moratorium when we said that this fee, any fees weren't gonna be erased in the following years. And also the second point is that the students, you mentioned wouldn't be abstract concepts, yet again, the student success fee does that precisely when it homo homogenizes the students and basically creates this assumption that everyone can pay the increase in this fee without taking into account that everyone doesn't live a static life and they have fluctuating lifestyles. And so, yeah, maybe it's an increase of $200, $300, but when you take that into account, that's a textbook. That's something else we can't afford. And it might seem minor, but sometimes the minor details are the ones that keep us out of the classroom for the most part. So before you guys take any votes, and you should take into account how it affects a student's lifestyle. And thank you for your time. Who's got our money? You say it's got our money. Accountability now. now. Who's, Who's got, got our money? money? Say it's got our money. Accountability now. now. Mitchell Kobayashi, um, Pat Gant, and Tessie Reese. Good afternoon, board members, uh, Chancellor White, and uh, Assembly Speaker Tony Atkins. My name is Andrea Ona, and I'm a student in the Community College. Last year, I had the honor to serve as the student trustee of Long Beach City College, and I also had the honor to serve as the Director of External Affairs of the California Community College Association of Student Trustees. This experience has allowed me to really know uh, the concerns of the students that and a community college level are, are facing. And one of the biggest concerns is their financial situation. If this is happening at the community college level, I cannot even imagine the situation of these students in the university. A lot of us, we have the dream of going to the university, but in our minds, it is really always that, will I be able to afford it, yes or not? I have the dream that I will get some degree at some point from a university here in the United States. And I know a lot of community college students have the same dream, but constantly is in my mind and in their minds, will I be able to pay for that? Recently, this, this, the student success fees and other fees have been increasing, and we don't really know if we are gonna be able to pay for that the state have shifted the financial responsibility and the financial responsibility of our education is right now getting in our shoulders. And we don't know whether or not we will be able to pay for that. We don't need more fees. We need more time with our professors. We need more counselors. We need more financial aids. We need more 
student time, basically. Um, I truly believe that the state, and I truly believe that you can do a lot better for solving the problem that the students have right now. Two years ago, I was seen as an idealistic because I was advocating for free community colleges for everybody. And today with the President Obama, um, how is President Obama has spoken on that, I believe that it's not too idealistic to say that one day we can have free universities for everybody too. Thank you very much for listening to me and I trust you can do a lot better for our students. Thank you. I would like to thank the board for the uh, time to come forward and uh, speak on the issue of student success fees and uh, acknowledge the passion that a lot of our students have about this issue. Um, I think that the process that you all have created and uh, passed this morning in committee and hopefully will be passed by the board will address a lot of the students' concerns regarding the implementation and adjustment of uh, student success fees. However, I'm really hesitant to uh, say that it will solve the complete problem because right now we have a situation where a student success fee might be paying for, for instance, athletics. Um, if we vote, you know, if athletics is looking for an increase in their funding and we vote to, uh, if a student referendum votes to not increase the fee, it can actually be adjusted, for instance, in, in like an IRA fee. So I hope that uh, this new process will actually cover all Category 2 fees as a whole. I think that there's a lot of loopholes leaving it open for uh, workarounds to go around this process and adjust other fees when that wasn't the student's intention at all. So I really hope that we can look into and delving into um, some coded memorandums and taking care of some of these issues so that way there's no workarounds. When students vote something, it's actually binding. We don't want to have a situation where students in a, in a binding referendum vote no on something and then they're able to adjust the fee through a different fee category. I think that can be very misleading and if uh, we take care of the problem and we have binding student referendums for all category two fees, I think that will solve a lot of the uh, students' issues with transparency. Thank you very much for your time. Andrea Guerra, Pat Gant, and Tessie Reeves. My name is Andrea Guerra, and I am a student at Cal State Long Beach. Growing up, I knew that education was the only way to be able to get ahead in life. This was something my parents instilled in me. I worked hard all through high school and was admitted to Cal State Long Beach. Choosing to attend Cal State Long Beach meant I had to live on campus since I, I did not have the means to transport or commute from my hometown, Santa Ana. So most of my financial aid goes towards paying for housing and the majority of the rest goes towards tuitions and fees since I'm a full-time student. My parents also wanted me to be in a more stable environment where I could focus on my studies since we've been going through hard financial times and they thought that this could distract me from my studies. I've had to take out two loans totaling up to $5,000 a year and have a work study job of 10 hours a week to be able to make ends meet. And yet I find myself struggling every semester to pay for books or when emergencies present themselves. I think this is why I stand before you today and ask you to not only to not increase the students, to not increase any fees, including the student success fee, but to also roll back so that students could stop seeing money as an obstacle to get an education and go back to focusing on what they're there for in those universities, to get an education. I would also like to conclude that my situation is a situation of many students and, Cal and many universities, including the Cal States. Thank you for your time. Um, good afternoon. Um, Pat Gant, President of California State University Employees Union. Um, uh, it's always a hard act to follow the students that are uh, raising their concerns about the student fees and the impact they have on their lives and their ability to uh, go to school and live. Um, 
most of these actions related to fees are a direct result of the state's abandonment of the master plan and the budget cuts to the CSU and other institutions. However, um, I do want to add that I think there's some hope. Um, our budget is better last year than it was the year before. Um, the governor is putting another $119 million um, into the budget this year and it's his proposal. But also there's other parts of the budget that um, give me a little more optimism than last time. Not that we uh, are near what we requested as a system and we need to pursue that, but um, Speaker Atkins uh, efforts last year on the augmentation uh, were not successful. However, less than six months later, there is $25 million one-time funding for some deferred maintenance that is in another part of the budget rather than the CSU allocation. That's a good beginning. That's a good base to work from. And basically, I think all of our efforts have been heard to some degree by the governor and the Department of Finance. That also means that we need to speak even louder and with a more unified voice to basically secure the rest of the funding so sorely needed for the CSU. And I think we can do that by working together. I think there's an opportunity here. Um, um, the focus on higher education uh, and the budget impacts uh, seems to be at a all time high, uh, even before the governor put out his budget in January. Um, since that, I think every single week there's been uh, multiple stories in every major newspaper related to higher education and the budget and the opportunities and challenges we all face. So my call to everyone in this room and beyond is um, we can basically move forward and get better funding. I believe the revenue will be there. Um, it's a matter of uh, convincing the legislature to put together a budget package that makes sense, that is unified, um, and then we can all convince the governor. I remain hopeful uh, doing it, working together, we're stronger. And um, it's for the future of California that I do this and make that urge to all of you to consider that and keep working together. Uh, Tessie, did you want to wave your time? Tessie Reese waves her time. Mike Chavez, Rocky Sanchez, and Alessandra Brewer. Here is the chair of Unit 5. I'm here to find ways to try to find ways for the CSU system to save some money. I do not see why we, do, we cannot find a way to have more system-wide policies where the CSU, EU, and the CEO's office cannot meet and have meet and confer over system-wide policies for all campuses where it sets the ceiling and not the floor. Right now, for example, we go to multiple campuses to meet and confer over the same policies, a potential of 23, 24 campuses where it can be done on a system-wide policy. If billion dollar industries can do this, where they don't leave it up to the individual stores to decide policies, I don't see why we at the CSU can't do the same, especially in times of fiscal restraint. Thank you. Rocky Sanchez, CSUEU Bargaining Unit 7 Vice Chair. And I just wanna follow up with Pat regarding the budget and easing some of the burden for the tuition fees that these students are having to pay. I work in an academic department. I hear the students, they're my students, in regards to the financial burdens that they are facing. They, they're going through a five-year professional degree program. When they talk to me about their financial burdens, what's happening with their families, my response to them, and again, with all of us that we need to contact our legislature and tell them to increase the budgets and to recognize that the CSU system is a good system because it's an investment within our future, not just the student's future, but I as an employee, my future and everybody's future. It's the future of the state. We need to contact our le legislature and for and let them to educate them in terms of what our student body is going through currently 
And if there's no more funding or no additional funding, what they will be facing in the future. Thank you. Okay, so uh, also Ms. Telecon and Ms. Taze gave up their time. Well, thank you uh, to all the speakers and uh, appreciate uh, your comments uh, and your remarks. And I know this board uh, uh, takes the remarks of, of varying points of views uh, seriously and into all of our deliberations. So thank you for that. We'll now uh, continue on with the, with the balance of our agenda. Um, and uh, I, I guess that's... Uh, that yours truly is up with uh, with my report. I will um, begin uh, uh, in the spirit of the Chancellor's uh, State of the CSU address. I wanna start by first acknowledging our students. Um, first, I congratulate the leaders of CSSA for taking a bold step in expanding student advocacy and development. Um, second, uh, congratulations to the students at Cal Poly Pomona and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Uh, with many friends and volunteers for winning the Lanthrop K. Leishman Award for the most beautiful non-commercial float in the 126 Tournament of Roses Parade. The float was named Soaring Stories, uh, which I could think, uh, which could be the motto for both uh, all of our Cal Polys as well as I think all of our campuses in the CSU. Uh, while I enjoyed seeing the float uh, from the comfort of my home, uh, many in the Cal Poly community braved uh, one of the coldest days in uh, the parade's history. So uh, kudos to those who, uh, who, who endured that, uh, that cold. We don't, we don't generally have that here in uh, California. And third, congratulations to uh, Gavin Baird, who's a Fresno State student who has received the prestigious Marshall Scholarship. This highly selective program brings American students to the United Kingdom for graduate study. Gavin is one of only four Californians selected and will get his master's degree at the London School of Economics, studying political responses to mass migration. Of course, we look forward to Gavin joining the class of three million CSU alumni before he leaves us for the UK. I would also like to congratulate the new fall graduates who became part of the class of three million this December. Graduates like Aaron Green, who we met yesterday and whose inspiring stories, um, I think give us um, a pause and reflection on the important work that we do here uh, at this body. As part of our ongoing celebration, the class of three million, I wanted to call your attention to the current promotional period that runs this month and next. Alumni have the opportunity to earn their advocate badge by signing up for their campus e-advocacy alerts. Alumni engagement and advocating for the university is critical in helping us reach out to our state legislative and, uh, uh, leaders and achieve our budget objectives. Uh, I'm proud to say I've earned the advocate badge on my, uh, on my profile, uh, and I encourage all of you, those uh, that are alumni to do so as well. Three million voices is a powerful thing. Uh, we saw some of that power at work during Community Impact Day in Sacramento a little more than a week ago. The CSU's activities in Sacramento show the value of the system as a facilitator of campus success. Monday, this Board of Trustees held a retreat where we discussed how, along with the Chancellor and his team, we can empower campus leadership, faculty and staff as they work to empower our students. The major theme of the retreat was how we, as a Board of Trustees, contribute in a beneficial and consequential way to the work of this great community. I wanna thank personally all of my colleagues uh, for, on the board for volunteering an extra day of your time uh, to participate in the retreat so that we could have this very important and I think and I hope to be ongoing conversation. I am pleased to nominate the following uh, trustees to the committee on committees whose charge it is to nominate the chair, vice chair and members of the standing committees. Uh, Rebecca Eisen will chair with Deborah Farrar as vice chair and trustees Day, Norton, and Kimbell will round out the committee. This nomination will become before the full board for a vote at the March meeting. Thank you all for your willingness to serve. With February coming up, it's also a great time to acknowledge the system and campus teams that help make Super Sunday a success every year. On three consecutive Sundays of next month, CSU leaders, including the chancellors, presidents, and I know several of my trustee colleagues, will speak from pulpits across the state to inspire youth to go to college. Following the church services, CSU outreach staff and volunteers will pass out information on preparing for college, applying to a CSU campus, filing for financial aid, and following community college transfer pathways to a CSU bachelor degree. 
The CSU Super Sunday Partnership has grown to include over 100 predominantly African-American churches. This program has been fully embraced by the university and church communities, and we are celebrating a milestone 10 years of this partnership. Speaking of the CSU community, 17 CSU campuses have recently received national recognition for their commitment to service learning between two different honors. 11 of our campuses received the Carnegie Foundation's 2015 Community Engagement Classification, and 15 CSU campuses were named in the 2014 President's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll. The CSU is a national leader in this area. More than half of the CSU's 450,000 students are engaged in some type of community service, totaling 32 million hours of service annually. Thank you again to the students, faculty, staff, and alumni that make our success possible. We have much to be proud of as a university community. And that concludes my report. As the chancellor uh, delivered his remarks uh, yesterday, the state of the CSU, I would invite our colleague Stephen Filling to present the report of the Academic Senate. Good afternoon, all. ASCSU, as the voice of over 23,000 faculty in the CSU, issues formal statements by resolution. At our meeting last week, the following statements were approved. And I'll note that you have a summary sheet and copies of the resolutions in your packets. AS 3197 asks that the Chancellor's Office and the Board of Trustees collaborate with Academic Senate representatives to draft a new and comprehensive policy on academic freedom. The current statement dates from 1971, making it older than a fair number of the faculty and even some of President Hirschman's buildings. And it doesn't address a number of issues that have arisen in the intervening 40 plus years. Chancellor White has indicated his interest in a conversation about academic freedom, and we look forward to engaging in that conversation and to developing a policy that provides guidance and appropriate protections pertinent to the challenges we face. AS 3199, a non-tenure track faculty and chaired governance asked campus academic senates to ensure that their constitutions and policies accord the status of faculty to all full and part-time lecturers, coaches, counselors, and librarians consistent with the CSU CFA bargaining agreement. It also encourages campus senates to revise their policies to encourage participation in shared governance by all faculty unit employees. AS 3200 expresses our appreciation and thanks to Governor Brown, to Assemblymember Williams, to Chancellor White, most certainly to AVC Zamaripa, our colleagues at CSSA and others for their work on AB 2324, which provides for the sitting faculty trustee to continue in office for up to one year in the event that the governor doesn't appoint a faculty trustee. I suspect that Trustee Stepanek's contributions to the conversations over the last year are appropriate testimony as to the need for that continuation. AS 3201, a call for withdrawal of the proposed 2015 teacher preparation regulations under Title II of the Higher Education Act echoes the position of the CSU, the California Department of Public Education, the Commission on Teacher Credentialing, and a wide array of other organizations. We believe that the proposed regulations make an erroneous causal connection between standardized test scores and the effectiveness of individual teachers and teacher preparation programs. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still recovering from the bug. The proposed regulations jeopardize teacher candidates and programs serving high poverty and ethnically diverse areas that we believe are an intrusion upon the state's responsibility for teacher preparation. AS3203 expresses our gratitude to the chancellor, to the staff of the chancellor's office, and to all who participated in the academic conference which took place following the November board meeting. The feedback we've received indicates that those attending found the conference and the conversations to be informative and useful. We're currently in the process of reviewing the event and the surveys with an eye toward making the next conference even more informative and more useful. Our continuing work involves a strong focus on investment in the CSU's means of production, long-term tenure track faculty. You engaged in the thoughtful debate this morning about the need to invest in, maintain, and replace the buildings and facilities of the CSU. 
The CSU also needs to invest in the faculty who design and deliver education to our students, be it in traditional classrooms or in virtual online communities. Yesterday, we were privileged to hear about four of those faculty, the 2015 Wong Award faculty. Quoting Nate Thomas, one of the awardees, the faculty I work with at Northridge, they're the cream of the crop. They could work at Stanford or Harvard, but they choose to work in the CSU because of its mission. We want to make a difference in the lives of our students, so many of whom are in, the first in their families to go to college. I am extremely proud to be part of the CSU faculty. Each of the awardees expressed similar sentiments. I believe their statements capture the transformative nature of what we aspire to and the reality that we are engaged in a task that requires interactions with a plethora of committed and engaged and talented faculty. Their statements highlight the need for faculty who can be long-term members of our university communities and who can devote their full energies toward meeting the goals Chancellor White laid out in his speech yesterday. We are appreciative of Chancellor White's understanding of the need for faculty and Vice Chancellor for Human Resources Lamb's willingness to work with the campuses to facilitate processes. We urge the campus presidents to continue their efforts to ensure the long-term viability of our universities by investing in faculty and we seek your support and advocacy as we move forward toward our goal of providing access to excellence for California's students. Chair Monville, that concludes my report. Thank you and get well. Uh, report of the CSU Alumni Council, President Kristen Crellin. Kristen. Thank you, Chair Monville. As you heard in the chair's report, we are excited to be promoting alumni to join our advocacy efforts and earn the advocate badge on their class of 3 million profile. Thank you, Chair Monville, for leading by example and already earning your badge. I'm also happy to report on the success of our Give Thanks promotion, which was shared with you at your November meeting. We had a great response from alumni sharing thanks to faculty and staff members on social media using the hashtag ThanksCSU. You can see a repository of all these thankful messages on the class of 3 million yearbook. They are quite heartwarming. In fact, the LA Times published a story last week highlighting the Give Thanks effort and one particularly touching story. Cal State Long Beach alumnus Chris Shively, now a captain in the Cal State Long Beach Police Department and one of the members of the public safety team for the Board of Trustees meetings, shared his thanks to faculty member Emmett Clark, who played an inspirational role of the his life while a student. Chris paid his mentor the ultimate compliment by naming his own son Emmett. What's remarkable about Chris's story is how clear the ripple effect of paying it forward is. What started as a caring CSU faculty member making a difference in the life of a student paved the way for Chris to make a positive difference in the lives of many others through his own role as a mentor. A special thank you to our faculty and staff for all they do for our students every day. I'd also like to share with you two upcoming regional alumni events that many of our campuses are participating in. On February 9th, we will host the Bay Area Alumni Mega Mixer with 13 of our campuses coming together for an evening of social and professional networking in San Francisco. Special thanks to the alumni relations staff at San Francisco State for all of their help in making this event come together. And on February 26th, we are looking forward to our fifth annual New York Tri-State Alumni Reception. This event has become a popular sellout each year and a great way for our campuses to engage their New York area alumni. As always, special thanks to President Garcia for securing the University Club and to host this reception and President Harrison for her alumni relations staff for helping us secure our guest speaker for the event, CNBC anchor Bill Griffith, a CSUN alumnus. Now I would like to introduce to you our alumni guest speaker, Lisa Canini. Lisa is a double CSU graduate, having earned her bachelor's degree in political science from Sonoma State University and a master's in national security studies from Cal State San Bernardino. Lisa was very, a very engaged student serving in student government as well as Sonoma State's representative to CSSA. She has put her CSU education to excellent use as a senior Homeland Security Anal um, Analyst for the Federal Government Accountability Office, where she has served for nine years. 
I'm especially proud to share with you that the Comptroller General of the United States recently presented Lisa with a Meritorious Service Award, a top honor for civilian federal employees in recognition of her contributions to maritime and aviation security. Thank you for joining us today, Lisa. Thank you, Kristen. I am a proud product of the CSU, having graduated from not one, but two CSU campuses, both of which provided me with many opportunities to develop skills that have suited me well in my career as a Homeland Security Analyst. It was during my four years at Sonoma State that I learned that one's education can come from experiences outside the classroom as much as in. The intimate campus life that came from attending a small school gave me the confidence to get involved in activities I may not have otherwise. I joined a national sorority of which I eventually became the financial vice president and president. I also served in student government as a representative for the School of Social Sciences and the CSSA representative. Both these experiences provided me with crucial leadership skills. After receiving my degree in political science from Sonoma State, I attended San Bernardino's master's program in national security studies because I knew I wanted to work for the federal government to improve our nation's security. I took interesting classes <coughs> on Eurasian regional security and arms control, among others. I was a member of the school's award-winning Model United Nations team. More importantly, I had a faculty advisor, Dr. William Green, who became a mentor and helped me realize my potential. Not only did Dr. Green have high expectations of his students in the classroom, he was famous for his 48 hour finals in which two research papers had to be written in yes, 48 hours. But he also encouraged us to get involved in activities that would help us obtain careers in the government. And at times he even created opportunities for us. One of my favorite memories is Dr. Green marching an entire class over to the administration building where we were encouraged to fill out applications to participate in the college's research presentation competition. He also organized trips to security conferences for us to present our research. The degrees I earned, as well as the activities I participated in and the student organizations I led, all helped me to develop a resume that led to an internship as an analyst of the Government Accountability Office, GAO, which is the investigative arm of the US Congress. During my internship, I was initially intimidated by my fellow interns who all attended prestigious private universities, and I wondered, how did I get here? But I quickly learned that during my six years in the CSU, I developed the skills necessary to succeed. Not only was I offered a job at the end of my internship, but when I returned full time, I was the first of my cohort to be promoted to senior analyst and the first given the opportunity to lead assignments as the analyst in charge. What makes it even better, as I like to remind my colleagues, is that I did it with a lot less student loan debt. <laughs> At GAO, I have led work reviewing the effectiveness of transportation security programs, including TSA's Explosive Detection Canine Program and Custom and Border Protections programs for securing maritime cargo arriving in the United States, much which arrives just next door at the Port of Long Beach. I've done well during my nine years at GAO. As Kristen mentioned just last month, the Comptroller General provided me with the Meritorious Service Award for my contributions to aviation and maritime security. As an aside, I'd also like to note that I met my husband in the CSU. He works here at the Chancellor's office helping to write the chancellor's speeches, and no, he did not write my speech today. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to discuss how my CSU education prepared me for my career. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing your CSU story with us and for your service to this country. We are very proud to have you as one of our distinguished alumni. Thank you, Chair Monville. This concludes my report. Thank you, uh, and Lisa, great to see you, and thank you for your continued service to our nation. I, I want my colleagues to all know that was not yet another selfish plug for Cal State San Bernardino, um, but, you know, yes, it was. But, but maybe it was, so great, great work, Lisa, and, and thank you. Thank you for coming to join us. Uh, report uh, of, our, uh, of our CSSA, the president of CSSA, Devon Graves. All righty. Thank you, Chair Monville. 
This past weekend, the CSA Board of Directors met at CSU San Marcos. We took action to select our Legislator of the Year, received updates on the successful recipients of our Innovation Grant Fund for student-led sustainability projects, and we finalized a model, model procedures document for auxiliaries meetings along with our partner, the Auxiliary Organizations Association, or AOA. Perhaps most memorable, however, we enjoyed a lovely dinner at the home of President Karen Haynes and her husband. Thank you again, President Haynes, for all of your hospitality. Our board continues our rigorous work of revising governing policies and preparing communications plans to prepare for the implementation of SURF. Your affirmative action on this item today is just one step in our process to expand involvement opportunities for students and to ensure our internal affairs are in order to do so effectively. I am happy to note that we have also launched the search for the next student trustee. As many of you know, Trustee Alexandrian's term ends soon, and we look forward to finding another student to follow her and Trustee Brewer's strong le legacy of leadership. In late February, CSSA will be hosting the 20th Annual California Higher Education Student Summit, or CHESS, at Sacramento State. 300 students representing the 23 campuses will be joining us in advocating for the CSU and its students. Thank you to all the presidents who are contributing to underwrite this conference and to those who have done so in preceding years. Regarding SURF, we're excited that the Board of Trustees will be taking action on this important proposal. I wanted to thank everyone who has played a crucial role in our efforts. To our Board of Directors, CSSA staff, our Chancellor Office partners, and the students who have attended today's meeting, thank you all very much. And in closing, we would like to take a moment to recognize newly appointed Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Lauren Blanchard. Congratulations on your new appointment, and we look forward to working with you. And I also would like to extend a welcome to newly appointed Cal Poly Pomona President, Dr. Soraya Coley. You chose this campus wisely. <laughs> no bias there, go Broncos. And with that, that concludes the report for the California State Student Association. Thank you, Devon. It's now time for the uh, approval of the minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting of November uh, 13, 2014. Uh, may I have a motion? I have a motion. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. The minutes are approved. We'll now go to the report of committees. Um, we will start uh, with the Committee on Institutional Advancement. Trustee Glazier. Chair Monville, uh, yesterday the Committee on Industrial uh, Institutional Advancement heard one consent item and two action items. The first action item approved the annual report of the philanthropic support for the 2013-14 year. On behalf of the committee, I would move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? The item is approved. Uh, the second item, the second action item, uh, was the naming of the Mashouf Wellness Center at San Francisco State University. On behalf of the committee, I would move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. Chair Monville, that concludes the business of the Institutional Advancement Committee. Thank you, Trustee Glazier. The naming, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumped ahead here. The Committee on Governmental Relations, Trustee Fagan. Yesterday, the uh, Committee on Governmental Relations heard three action items. The first action item approved the federal agenda for 2015. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. The second action item approved the statement of state legislative principles for the 2015 2016 session. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. And the last action item approved the uh, sponsored state legislative program for 2015. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved.
Chair Monville, that uh, concludes the business of the Committee on Governmental Relations. Thank you, Trustee Fagan. Trustee Garcia, the Committee on Audit. Uh, yes, thank you. The Committee on Audit heard one committee action item and three information items. Um, the act one action item was the assignment of functions to be reviewed by the Office of Audit and Advisory Services for the calendar year 2015. The committee took action to approve an audit plan for 2015. Uh, there is no further action uh, or voting required for the board on this item. Uh, the second item was a status report on the current and follow-up internal audit assignments. Uh, we then listened um, to an information item on a report on the system-wide audit in accordance with general accounting uh, principles, including a report of, to management. And then the final agenda item was the uh, single audit reports on federal funds that were presented. Um, that Those were the three information items, and Chair Monville, that concludes the report for the Committee on Audit. Thank you, uh, Trustee Garcia. Uh, the Committee on Educational Policy, Trustee Farrar. Thank you, Chair Monville. The Committee on Educational Policy acted in closed session yesterday morning on nominations for honorary degrees. The committee presented four information items yesterday. They were one, an update on the California State University Libraries of the Future initiatives. Two, a report on STEM collaboratives across the CSU. Three, a presentation of the Apple Distinguished Program Award to CSU Northridge for their My CSUN tablet initiative. And four, a ceremony honoring the 2015 Wong Family Excellent Award receipt, recipients. Chair Monville, that concludes the Committee on Educational Policy. Thank you, Trustee Farrar. The Committee on Organization and Rules, Trustee Stepanek. Chair Monville, the Committee on Organization and Rules met today and considered one information item pertaining to the schedule for the board meetings for calendar year 2016. Chair Monville, that concludes the business for the Committee on Organization and Rules. Thank you, Trustee Stepanek. Uh, Committee on University and Faculty Personnel, Trustee Kim Bell. Don't I don't have a script, script here, but we're going to do it this way. Um, uh, the Committee on uh, University and Faculty Personnel, closed session. No, no. Oh. Met yesterday. Met, sorry. Uh, today. 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 Met it's okay. today. <laughs> we could fake it. Do you yeah. Oh, I don't have one. I'm not sure why. It was, mm, it yeah. was in your packet that we left on your chair. That's all right. Go really? On. I didn't. Okay. Sorry. Okay. The agenda for the Committee on University and Faculty Personnel included one consent item, two, two action items, and one information item. Agenda item one was an action item that set compensation for the newly appointed Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution, resolution as stated in agenda item one. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. We have one opposition. Any abstentions? The item is approved. Agenda item two was an action item on the evaluation process for the chancellor. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution as stated in agenda item two. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Is it as amended? Can you amend it? Uh, it would have been amended. It was it was approved in committee as amended, so it should be reflected in the resolution. But I think, for the record, I think that's a good clarification as amended in committee. So we have a motion and a second uh, to approve the item as amended in committee. Uh, any further discussion on the item? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. One abstentions. The item is approved. Agenda item three provided information on the executive transition plan for Dr. Michael Ortiz. Chair Monville, that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Kimbell. Uh, the Committee on Campus Planning Buildings and Grounds, Trustee Eisen. Thank you, Chair Monville. This morning, the Committee on Campus Planning Buildings and Grounds considered three action items. Agenda item one seeks board approval to amend the 2014-15 non-state funded capital outlay program for Cal State Channel Islands and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a, a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
All right, opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. Item two seeks board certification of the environmental impact report and approval of the 2014 master plan revision amendment of the 2014-15 non-state capital outlay program and approval of schematic plans for parking structure two for Capali Pomona. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The item's approved. Item three seeks board approval of amendment of the 2014-15 non-state capital outlay program and approval of schematic plans for University Office Park Phase 1 for Cal State Bakersfield. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. There is a motion uh, on the item. Is there a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? The item is approved. Thank you, Chair Monville. That concludes the report of the Committee on Campus Planning, Buildings, and Grounds. Thank you, Trustee Eisen. Uh, Committee on Finance, Trustee Actenberg. Uh, thank you, Chair Monville. Uh, agenda item one seeks board approval for the Working Group on Category 2 Student Success Fee Report. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. There's a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. The item is approved. Agenda item two seeks board approval for the voluntary statewide student involvement and representation fee. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No, and any abstentions? The item is approved. Agenda item three seeks board approval to issue trustees of the California State University system-wide revenue bonds and related debt instruments for projects at CSU Channel Islands and Cal Poly Pomona. On behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. Agenda item four seeks board approval to issue trustee of the California State University system-wide revenue bonds and related debt instruments for system-wide infrastructure improvement projects. And on behalf of the committee, Mr. Chairman, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No, no. Any abstentions? The item is approved. Uh, agenda item five seeks board approval for the final development agreement for a commercial office facility on real property at CSU Bakersfield. And on behalf of the committee, I move the resolution. We have a motion. Is there a second? second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? See none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the report of the Committee on Finance. Trustee Actenberg, if I could ask you to keep keep on moving with the Committee on Collective Don't Bargaining. Don't mind if you do, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Okay. The Committee on Collective Bargaining had two action items on the agenda. First, to ratify the tentative agreement with CSUEU Unit 13. The second, to ratify the tentative agreement with United uh, Union of American Physician and Dentist Unit 1. Uh, the committee voted uh, unanimously to ratify both. Uh, under the Board of Trustees standing rules, the committee has the authority on behalf of the board to ratify these agreements. Therefore, they are ratified, and that would conclude uh, the report of my committee. Chair Monfield. Thank you, Trustee Actenberg, for uh, both of uh, those committees at work. I appreciate that. That concludes our committee reports. Again, uh, I want to thank uh, my colleagues for three great days of really good work and substantive conversation. Uh, the meeting, uh, the next meeting of the CSU Board of Trustees is scheduled for March 24th and 25th of 2015. The board will convene on Tuesday, March 24th, 2015. Notice of the meeting will out in ordinary course 10 days in advance of those meetings. And with that, we're adjourned. Chancellor's live stream. Please adjust your audio accordingly.